Hello everyone and bonjour. Welcome to our Trade Commissioner Market Briefing session on South Korea. I'm John Zimmerman, Minister, Councillor and Senior Trade Commissioner at the Embassy of Canada here in Seoul. Today we will introduce the Korean creative industry sector, specifically the Korean gaming industry. Let's start, however, with a few facts about Korea. Korea is located in Northeast Asia and is virtually an island since its borders are with North Korea and the sea. Its closest neighbors are China, its largest commercial partner, and Japan, with which it shares a strong economic connection. Korea's land mass is about 1% of Canada's. It's about the same size as New Brunswick. However, Korea's population is over 52 million, with over a third of people living in the greater Seoul area. About 70 years ago, by the end of the Korean War, the country was in ashes. With a GDP per capita of less than $100, it was the poorest country in the world. Following the devastation of the Korean War, however, Korea began a process of export-led economic development, transforming from the poorest country to a developed country. Today, after what is called the Korean economic miracle, its economy is the 10th to 13th largest in the world and the fourth largest in Asia. Indeed, it is, only, it is one of only seven countries in the world belonging to the 3050 Club, countries that have a population of over 50 million people and a per capita GDP of at least $30,000. With companies that you know well, such as LG, Samsung, Hyundai, POSCO, Kia and SK, Korea is a leader in high-end electronic goods, automobiles, batteries, semiconductors, 5G internet, shipbuilding, nuclear technology and steel making. However, it has recently developed incredible strength in the creative industry sector. Who hasn't heard of its K-culture, K-pop and K-film industry? In June 2018, Canada announced the new Creative Export Strategy developed by the Department of Canadian Heritage in partnership with Global Affairs Canada. The Creative Export Strategy aligns with the government's Creative Canada vision aimed at helping Canada's creative industries and artists reach domestic and international audiences. The Government of Canada provides support to creative industry exporters through the Creative Export Strategy. The Trade Commissioner's Service is also here on the ground to help you with market preparation, such as today's webinar, but also with personalized business advice and matchmaking services. If you have any questions on the Korean market, the Trade Commissioner's Service in Seoul is pleased to provide our assistance. Please don't hesitate to call on us. Thank you. Merci. Kamsa Hamida. Hello everyone, my name is Sui Hang Kim. I'm a trade commissioner responsible for the creative industry sector, including gaming, here at the Embassy of Canada in Seoul. I'm delighted to meet you all. As our senior trade commissioner made his welcoming remarks, the creative industry sector is becoming more important as Canada aims to become Creative Canada. Among several subsectors under the creative industries, the gaming sector is one of the key sectors that Canada is proud of and known for its capabilities. We believe that Canada and South Korea's strengths in the gaming sector are well aligned, suggesting a great potential to collaborate in various ways. In this context, we are pleased to arrange today's discussion to provide some market insights to the Canadian gaming companies. Today, we have our special guest, Ms. Catherine Morell, Global Team Manager from Lattice Global Communication. Catherine is here to introduce the Korean gaming industry and discuss what the opportunities are for Canadian gaming firms. Catherine, would you please introduce yourself and say hello to our Canadian companies? Yes, hello, thank you for having me here. Um, I have been working at Lattice for six years and helped grow the English localization team into the global team. So not only do we translate and localize the games that we work on, but we also always stay on top of gaming trends both in Korea and um, worldwide to meet the needs of our clients and the players. So I hope I can give you insight into the South Korean gaming market today. Thank you, Katrin. Now, let me dive into the most important question first. Can you please tell us why Korea is an attractive market for foreign gaming companies? Sure. Um, let me start with a few important statistics to explain better about the Korean gaming market. 
So first, um, let's look at the Korean rank in the global gaming market. In 2022, Korea accounted for a 7.6% share of the global gaming market. It ranked in the fourth place um, after the US, China and Japan, ranking the same as the previous year. Now, this slide shows the Korean gaming population. According to a survey of the general public, ages 10 to 65 years old, regarding game usage since June 2021, 74.4% of them play games. This has been a steadily growing trend in recent years, most likely attributed to better mobile devices and better internet connections everywhere to allow for easy access to video games for everyone. If we compare this to Canada, most recent statistics say that while 89% of the 6 to 17 year olds play video games, only 61% of the 18 to 64 year olds enjoy it. So you can see that Korea offers a lot more opportunities with a more varied demographic. Thank you for sharing these statistics. Korea's global ranking and gaming population already indicate how important and promising the Korean market is for gaming companies. Indeed, gaming has been a part of Korean culture for decades. As an example, South Korea was the first country to host the eSports events over 20 years ago. From a non-Korean perspective, do you agree with me? I agree with you totally. <laughs> um, I think Koreans live in a very competitive and busy society which makes them find ways to release their stress in a very efficient manner. And I think gaming is one of their solutions in a positive manner, not only playing themselves, but even consuming esports, just like Western countries watch ice hockey, soccer, and baseball games. There even is a word, terimangjok, that means something like vicarious satisfaction um, that Koreans say they feel when they watch streamers and esports games. Indeed, in particular, many Koreans commute using public transportation and commuting time can be well over an hour. They use this time to play games on their phones. Now, let's get into a more detailed analysis of the Korean gaming market. Can you explain what platforms work best in the Korean market and some prospects for its platform? Yes, as you might know, mobile is the most popular platform, representing more than 50% of the domestic market share, followed by PC games and console games. More specifically, let's look at the prospects of the domestic gaming industry. This slide shows anticipated sales volume by platform. Unfortunately, the numbers for the ongoing year are not out yet, but we can take a look at 2022 and see the trends for the following years. So in 2022, the domestic gaming market is projected to have expanded by around 8.5%. And as the grip of COVID-19 loosens, growth in the game production and distribution sectors is anticipated, with an emphasis on mobile and arcade games. Additionally, the circulation market encompassing venues like PC Bang and gaming arcades is on a recovery trajectory, adapting to the endemic phase of COVID-19. And just quickly for those who might not know what a PC Bang is, it is like a PC cafe where friends of all ages get together after school, work, on weekends and play games together. These places usually have the newest computers with the best hardware on hand, which makes games accessible even to people who don't have a high-end setup at home. So you can see why they took a hit during the pandemic, but people are going out now more than ever to meet with friends and will also return to the PC Bangs. And within this context, the PC gaming market contracted by 0.2% in 2021 compared to the prior year. Although a series of new PC games were slated for release, the marginal decline is attributed to their substantial growth in 2021, considering the time lag before sales influenced the market. The mobile gaming sector, on the other hand, still surged by 14.1%, driven by accessibility and a string of successful releases probably also driven by people spending more time at home and only mobile phones accessible as gaming platforms due to COVID-19. But as we can see, for 2024, an increase is already expected. In contrast, the console gaming market saw a 3.7 dip due to the absence of standout content. While 2022 witnessed a 4.2 drop in console gaming sales, a recovery is anticipated from 2023 onwards. 
Simultaneously, the arcade game production and distribution business along with gaming arcades are poised for substantial year-on-year -year growth of 10.9% and 57.6% respectively. This resurgence is aligned with the easing of social distancing measures aiming to reclaim market sales similar to the pre-COVID-19 era. I'm glad to hear all the positive aspects in general. Now, I would like to discuss the popular genre of games Koreans are most interested in playing. Can you give us some in insights? Absolutely. There are three notable insights. First, competitive games are highly popular among Korean players. Second, collaborative gaming experiences are favored, emphasizing teamwork. And finally, games hold social significance, often connecting players. In terms of genre, RPGs hold the lead, trailed by strategy and action. While female players lean towards puzzles and casual games, RPGs continue to dominate. Interestingly, during H1 of 2020, casual games did not make the top charts in South Korea. Instead, RPGs, strategy, action, simulation and sports secured the top spots. If you look at the chart, you can see that average time people spend playing RPG games is more than three times that of a second category game. South Koreans love MMORPGs, especially Lineage. The top five average game usage times data consists only of RPG games. These MMORPG games require a lot of time and effort compared to other games, which causes users to spend excessive time playing the game. The more time users spend in the game, the more they get attached to it. Katrin, why do you think Koreans like RPG games this much? That is a very good question. I believe that South Korea's early adoption of 5G technology and the prevalence of internet cafes have significantly shaped the gaming preferences of its players. RPG was also the genre that was most popular in South Korea at the dawn of gaming, so one could say that the gaming industry grew up with it and when Lineage was released, NCSoft allowed PC Bungs to buy a monthly license fee so clients could play it for free, which naturally led to its popularity due to the availability. Nowadays, Lineage and many other RPGs are available on mobile, so you don't have to go to a PC Bang anymore. You can play your favorite game anywhere if you want. You're right. Korea has one of the highest smartphone penetration rates in the world, with 48 million smartphone users, which is about 94% of its population. And of course, 5G networks. And many smartphones are high-end phones with the latest specifications. Now, can we look into more details by platform? Sure. So first, the chart shows the number of mobile game users by category. You can quickly notice that people love puzzle games. In mobile, puzzle and quiz games lead in user numbers, followed by action, racing, and RPG genres. Puzzle games' widespread popularity isn't exclusive to South Korea. They dominate in many countries due to their role in casual, time-killing, akin to social media use. However, being most used doesn't equate to superior quality. Puzzle games often serve as quick diversions, potentially explaining their high user count. This might indicate a prevalence of simpler, lightweight titles that users can swiftly download. Yet, popularity doesn't always signify true love for a game. What matters more is recognizing the games capturing most users' time and money. So, furthermore, gauging popularity by user numbers remains an essential factor to grasp. In PC, League of Legends stands as the overwhelming favorite among PC games. Following closely are games like Battlegrounds, FIFA, Lineage, Starcraft, Valorant and Diablo. Other games such as Overwatch, MapleStory, Sudden Attack, Call of Duty, Tales Runner, Minecraft, Lost Ark and Dungeon Fighter were also mentioned quite frequently in that order. Great! You explained the two most popular platforms that Koreans love to play on. And your earlier statistics show that mobile and PC games are taking over more than 80% of the market share. Are there any changing trends to it? I remember long lines of people waiting to purchase new console games recently. 
Are there any opportunities for Canadian console game developers to work with Korean companies? You're right, Sohyang. Despite Nintendo's silence on its South Korean console sales data, local distributor Daewon Media reported a remarkable year-on-year -year doubling of Switch sales in the second quarter, reaching 90,964 units. This surge was fueled by the popularity of titles like Animal Crossing. This resurgence of interest in the Switch underscores a shift in local gamers' preferences. The attraction to well-crafted games is typically associated with consoles is outshining simple mobile offerings, driven by younger players seeking polished experiences. Last year marked a pivotal moment for the console gaming sector within Korea's gaming industry. G-Star 2022, held in November, stood as a testament to this shift. Titles like Neowiz Lies of P, Crafton's Callisto Protocol, and Nexon's First Descendant and the upcoming Dave the Diver console version took the stage. Notably, Lies of P also garnered accolades at Gamescom in Germany last August, clinching three awards at the Gamescom Awards. International console platform companies are also expressing heightened interest in domestic console releases. Shift Up's Stella Blade, previewed at the State of Play event in September 2022, garnered attention along with MS Xbox sponsorship of the Busan Indie Connect Festival. Games like Lies of P, Stellar Blade, First Ascendant and Card Rider Drift must make waves on both domestic and international fronts, driving momentum for future entrants. Wow, I'm pleased to hear all these changes as many Canadian gaming studios are strong at developing console games. Can you tell us more if there are any other changing trends or important issues? Yes, I would like to touch on three important keywords. Blockchain, Metaverse and Neutral. First, let's talk about blockchain. Blockchain in the Korean gaming industry is an emerging focus spurred by WeMate's achievements and the global performance of Mir4 last year. Following WeMate's lead, companies like Com2Us Group, Netmarble, Kakao Games and Neobis have ventured into blockchain gaming, unveiling their cryptocurrencies and platforms. Even industry giants like Crafton and NCSoft are diving into this realm. However, this year brought to light the challenges that blockchain gaming must surmount. While gaming quality remains pivotal, the integration of cryptocurrency for in-game transactions holds equal weight. Regardless of scale, cryptocurrency's volatility can significantly impact linked games due to uncontrollable external factors. Real-world economic fluctuations and cryptocurrency-specific incidents can cause disruptions. And this leads to steep declines in game-related coin values, missing opportunities for market rebounds. Addressing these unconventional challenges becomes paramount as they take on amplified significance in the context of blockchain technology. Moreover, the delisting of WeMix from major Korean exchanges and fluctuations in come to us Group's virtual asset X-Play underscore the volatility of the emerging play-to-earn gaming space. The regulatory landscape remains dynamic and while discussions continue solidifying the foundation is crucial for P2E games success, even as regulatory hurdles ease. Now, what about Metaverse in South Korea? At the forefront of the Metaverse is Hegin, a Seoul-based startup founded in 2017. Their Metaverse game Play Together has amassed a staggering 130 million global downloads since April 2021. According to data analysis Sensor Tower, Play Together ranks as the second most played metaverse game in the Asian and US markets, trailing only behind Roblox. Earlier this year, its daily active users crossed the impressive threshold of 4 million. Hagen's Play Together seamlessly blends social features with minigames, allowing users to play, learn, shop, socialize within its virtual world. From competitive pursuits like crown stealing races to non-competitive activities such as camping and fishing, Play Together offers a vibrant range of experiences. Extending its reach into the entertainment sphere, Hegin hosted Metaverse concerts in collaboration with Genie Music, drawing tens of thousands of users. But it's not just Hagen in the Metaverse race. 
come to us, a major player in the Korean gaming landscape is investing a substantial 1 trillion won in its upcoming metaverse platform set to launch next year. Their vision, articulated by CEO Song Jae-jun, is to create a virtual world that parallels real-world megacities, a space that transcends limitations and beckons creativity. This drive for innovation also resonates with Nexon, which is developing services to synchronize with the metaverse. Their project MOD, a development toolkit, allows users to craft metaverse experiences and integrate e-commerce features, fostering a bridge between the virtual and tangible worlds. Amidst these dynamic shifts, let's not forget the new trend sweeping South Korea. It's a unique blend of nostalgia and novelty. Neutral marketing capitalizes on the need for comfort and unique experiences in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. Distinguishing Neutro from its predecessor, Retro, hinges on a fusion of past trends with fresh ideas. While Retro evokes memories of the past, Neutro injects newness into nostalgia, offering a reinterpretation rather than a mere reproduction. Moreover, Neutro's appeal extends to a younger demographic, particularly the MZ generation, born between 1980 and 2004. This generation's embrace of Neutro is reshaping marketing strategies, capturing those seeking both familiarity and innovation. A standout success within this trend is Kart Rider Rush Plus. This remastered version of the classic racing game Kart Rider, optimized for the mobile devices, has captured the hearts of both existing players and the MZ generation. It amassed an impressive 9.2 million new downloads based on Android last year, outshining its peers. In the realm of classic game revivals, the reemergence of Diablo II Resurrected after two decades has stirred emotions. This resurrection is fueled by the enduring popularity and brand value of the Diablo series. This decision aligns with a business perspective that seizes the nostalgia-driven demand at the right time. Yet, the formula for remastered game success lies in more than nostalgia. Prioritizing gameplay excellence, incorporating new content, and embracing modern technology is pivotal. It's not just about reliving the past, it's about creating a next generation classic with lasting appeal. This journey demands more than profit seeking. It demands fan loyalty, emotional connection, and storytelling that resonates with the MZ generation. Wow, hearing all these new trends, I realize how rapidly the gaming sector has been evolving. Now, I want to ask you questions that Canadian companies would be very interested in learning more about. Do you think South Korean studios are open to working with international partners? If so, what would be the common ways? Let me show you the gaming import statistics. Even though South Korea is ranking very high regarding the share of the global gaming market, the import amount of games in 2021 almost doubled compared to 2015, showing a rising trend regarding the imports of games in South Korea. South Korea's largest export scale was made of mobile games, while the imports also consist mainly of mobile games, followed by PC games and console games. Still, there are plenty of PC games that count as the most popular games in Korea, such as League of Legends, StarCraft or Overwatch. Those are all games developed by overseas studios and imported to South Korea although localization played an important role in successfully penetrating the market. Please remember that many South Korean companies express their interest in partnering with foreign companies for co-development or work for higher contracts. This can be seen as a chance for foreign companies to settle in the Korean gaming market and gain popularity in Asia. But in order to secure success, it is crucial to learn about Korean gaming companies and their strategies. Indeed. As you rightly pointed out, it is important to understand the Korean companies, Korean market, and wider Asian market strategies. Now, this leads us naturally to the next question. Can you introduce us to some key players in Korea? Yes, among the biggest players in the Korean gaming market are the three Ns, NCSoft, Nexon, and Netmarble. 
These are the developers of big hits such as Lineage, Card Rider Rush Plus, or Tower of God A New World. Apart from those three, other gaming companies that established their place in the Korean gaming market are Smilegate, with the worldwide hit Crossfire, and Lost Ark. Also, you must have heard of Pearl Abyss, the developer of Black Desert. For the mobile gaming market, especially companies Crafton and Kakao Games wield significant influence and therefore could be of advantage for foreign companies to work with. Facing increased demand for mobile games in Korea and having such a high percentage of gamers playing them, cooperation between foreign and domestic companies to release a game on the Korean gaming market could turn out very profitable. However, it is vital for the success of the game to be localized. As Korean culture can differ very much from Western cultures, the game needs to be adapted to the Korean culture and therefore an understanding of South Korea and its people is of high importance. So if foreign companies were to publish their game in Korea, cooperation with a Korean localization company would be a common way to make the game appropriate for the Korean game market and guarantee success. Catherine, now I have an evolving question. If I were a Canadian gaming firm, it would be of course fantastic if one of the big Korean gaming firms decided to publish my games. However, if that doesn't happen, is there any way for me to publish my game in the Korean market on my own? In that case, what are the key factors that I have to keep in mind? In comparison to many Western countries, the Korean government is very active in protecting game users and preventing speculative activities via legislative means, namely the Game Industry Promotion Act. The Game Industry Act was passed in 2006 and a new comprehensive amendment bill is currently in its final stages of implementation. So these strict regulations make self-publishing your game on the Korean market a rather hard and tedious endeavor. However, for those still eager to take this path, here are some of the major things to keep in mind. South Korea's Game Industry Promotion Act dictates that games promoted and distributed in the domestic marketplace must apply for a rating. Ratings range from all, plus 12, plus 15, and adult only, and come with content warnings about sexuality, violence, language, gambling, etc. Crucially, in South Korea, these ratings are more than simple guidelines. Ratings determine a gamer's ability to access a specific game. The agency in charge of this is the GRAC, the Gaming Rating and Administration Committee, which launched in 2013 to foster a healthy, prosperous game culture. Please note that some businesses such as Google Play, Apple's App Store or Smilegate Stove are approved by Korean authorities to provide independent self-ratings through the IRCB, Independent Rating Classification Business Entity. Further information concerning the rating and application can be found on the official website of the GRAC. On a more general note, any content related to gambling is completely illegal to Korea. <laughs> All these regulations and hurdles game developers have to overcome before publishing a game in Korea show how important localization is in entering a foreign market. It also highlights that localization is more than just simply translating a game. Rather, it encompasses all changes that must be made to accommodate foreign users in a way that a domestic game would. This of course entices the translation, but also how and where South Korean gamers typically play, as well as the systems and laws in place as the rating system demonstrates. As a last advice, I would urge foreign game developers to think about the difference in gaming habits seen between the West and Asia. While we already have seen that mobile games dominate the market with 84% of users, it is important to understand that many of these users play during the commute in the subway. The Korean daily life is so stressful that it often only leaves short periods of time in which one is able to play. Therefore, the types of games that are best suitable and most popular are widely different from those in the West in terms of gameplay and features. In the same vein, in localizing a game to the Korean market, it might also be beneficial to rethink game mechanics or implement new features to accommodate Asian audiences. I think this would also greatly increase your chances of success in the South Korean market.
Thank you very much, Catherine. Having a conversation today, I learned a lot from you, and I'm sure our Canadian companies also gained great market insight from you. Before closing, do you have any last comment you would like to make? Yes, I think it would be good to mention the G-Star Expo in Busan this year. It is coming up in November and the convention offers a B2C and B2B exhibition which can offer um, to be a first step in finding Korean partners. So, Hyang, do you also plan to attend the exhibition? Of course I will. Um, the Embassy of Canada in Seoul has been participated in G-Star show for several years and we are there to facilitate B2B meetings between Canadian and Korean companies. Great, well then, I will see you there. <laughs> see you there, thank you again. Thank you for having me. I hope that today's market briefing presentation and the conversation we had with Catherine were valuable in giving you a clear picture of Korean gaming market. Just in case you're not familiar with the Trade Commissioner service, we have the mandate to promote Canadian economic interest in the global marketplace. Therefore, our focus is setting up business-to-business -business connections, providing insights about the market, and uncovering new business opportunities for Canadian companies. You can get more detailed information on our TCS website at tradecommissioner.gc.ca. As we are nearing the conclusion of the video, I'd like to direct your focus to part three. In this section, Canadian Heritage will provide you with insight into Canada's creative export strategy and how you can benefit from its programs and services in your export development efforts. Thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to meeting you in person in the near future. Thank you. 감사합니다. Hello, I'm Dominic Kolasar, Director of International Trade Policy and Programs at the Department of Canadian Heritage. Bonjour, je suis Dominique Colassar, Directeur des Politiques et Programmes du Commerce International au Ministère du Patrimoine Canadien. Hope you've enjoyed this webinar so far, which we're happy to deliver to you in close collaboration and partnership with Global Affairs Canada's Trade Commissioner Service in Seoul, South Korea. By now, you've heard about business development opportunities that are worth exploring in South Korean creative industries market. I'd like to briefly outline how the Government of Canada can help you seize these opportunities under Canada's creative export strategy. The strategy, first created in 2018, is now in its second edition. It offers programs and services to help Canadian creative industries maximize their export potential and competitive position on the international stage. Under the strategy, the Department of Canadian Heritage organizes and leads large multi-sectoral trade missions to target markets across the world. As trade mission participants, Canadian businesses can expect tailored B2B meetings, market briefings, presentations from local industry experts, sector-specific site visits, such as theater venues or video game and film studios, as well as networking events with local business and government representatives. I'm happy to share that in 2024, South Korea will be a target market for our department's trade mission. Aside from trade missions, our department also partners with Canada's Trade Commissioner Service in many key markets on delivering what we call amplification events, where we bolster Canadian business presence with customized commercial programming at major sector-specific festivals and international conferences. The Creative Export Strategy also includes an application-based funding program called Creative Export Canada. This program helps to raise exposure of Canadian creative works in international markets and to increase export profitability for Canada's creative industries. The program has two streams, the Export Readiness Stream for established exporters and the Export Development Stream for new or early stage exporters. Another new feature of the strategy is the creation of the Creative Export Navigator Service at our department to help creative industry businesses and organizations navigate their export journey through a single point of contact to pinpoint services and programs within the Government of Canada which might be of interest and value. 
For more information on Canada's creative export strategy, visit canada.ca. You could also email us at exports at pch.gc.ca to subscribe to our distribution list and receive information on future opportunities such as trade missions, amplification events, new application intakes for the Creative Export Canada program. I wish you the best of luck in discovering the South Korean market and forging new long-lasting business partnerships. Je vous souhaite bonne chance dans votre découverte du marché sud-coréen et dans la création de nouveaux partenariats commerciaux durables. Merci. Thank you.